The importance of history lies in providing context and understanding of past events, shaping our present and future in between. However, there are instances where crucial historical records are lost or hidden, leaving gaps in our knowledge of what is to come. Even with certain challenges, historians and archaeologists strive to unravel ancient mysteries, contributing to patching up gaps in the historical record. In this video, we will delve into 10 ancient mysteries that continue to baffle us, highlighting the ongoing efforts to uncover the truth behind these enigmatic events. Number 10. The Mysteries of the Stonehenge Stonehenge, a prehistoric monument in Wiltshire, England, stands out as one of the most iconic archaeological sites globally. However, it remains surrounded by mystery. Even though the monument is well known and has been extensively researched, there are still many mysteries surrounding its construction, purpose, and the culture behind it. Stonehenge was built in multiple stages, starting approximately 5,000 years ago. The distinctive stone circle was constructed during the late Neolithic period, around 2500 BC. The monument is made up of large standing stones, with some coming from the nearby Marlborough Downs and the smaller blue stones from the Preseli Hills in Wales, which are over 140 miles away. Experts are puzzled by how the builders transported these massive blue stones across a vast distance using primitive technologies, raising questions about their knowledge and motivation for the task. The design of the monument is just as mysterious. Stonehenge's stones are positioned to align with important astronomical occurrences, particularly the solstices. During the summer solstice, the avenue leading up to the monument aligns with the rising sun, while during the winter solstice, the setting sun aligns with the monument from the opposite direction. The precise alignment of Stonehenge indicates that the builders possessed advanced understanding of the stars and planets, sparking theories that the structure served as a calendar, observatory, or place of sun worship. Despite these insights, our understanding of the culture responsible for constructing Stonehenge remains limited. There are no written records left by these individuals, so our understanding of them is primarily based on archaeological discoveries. Their spiritual beliefs, Societal structures and daily lives are still shrouded in mystery, contributing to the enigmatic aura of Stonehenge. The current Stonehenge is not fully intact, as many of its original sarsens and bluestones were removed during Britain's Roman and medieval eras. The ground within the monument has been significantly disrupted over the centuries. Historian and antiquarian William Camden mentioned finding ashes and pieces of burnt bone in the 16th century, indicating various levels and purposes of digging that have taken place. In 1620, George Villiers, 1st Duke of Buckingham, dug a significant hole within the stone circle in search of treasure. William Stukeley surveyed Stonehenge and its surrounding monuments a century later, while Flinders Petrie made the first accurate plan of the stones in 1874 to 1877. In 1877, Charles Darwin excavated two holes at Stonehenge to study the impact of earthworms on soil movement. William Gowland conducted the first official archaeological excavation in 1901. Many excavations and studies have occurred throughout the centuries, each uncovering a piece of the puzzle while also adding to the mystery. Radiocarbon dating, landscape archaeology, and geophysical surveys have all contributed to unraveling the mysteries of the monument. Stonehenge still guards numerous mysteries, its quiet stones serving as an eternal reminder of the enigmatic past. Number 9. The Nazca Lines in 1553, a Spanish conquistador released a captivating book detailing a series of trail markers located in southern Peru on a dry plateau within the Nazca Desert. Despite being visible from the surrounding hills, it wasn't until the 20th century that airplane pilots flew over them, leading people to discover they held significance beyond being mere trail markers. The Nazca Lines consist of a collection of massive geoglyphs believed to have been created between 500 BCE and 500 CE. With such a wide range, the estimation is based on the limited written records available for Andean cultures, making it the best approximation by experts. Most of the lines consist of basic geometric shapes, while others showcase intricate designs of plants and animals. Not only are these designs visually appealing, but their creation process is equally fascinating. These intricate designs were crafted by skillfully revealing various colored layers of sand, 
through the art of drawing lines. These lines are truly remarkable because, despite being simple drawings on the ground, they have endured for over a millennium. It's fascinating how few buildings can withstand the test of time like that. The Nazca lines were created over 2,000 years ago by the Nazca people, with some believed to be even older and attributed to the Paracas culture. The images from the Paracas era often depict human-like figures and share similarities with earlier petroglyphs in the area. In contrast, the Nazca lines predominantly feature depictions of plants and animals like a monkey, killer whale, condor-like bird, hummingbird, pelican, and spider, along with various flora, trees, and geometric shapes such as triangles, trapezoids, and spirals. Some believe that the figures, which appear indecipherable from ground level, hold a deeper meaning that can only be grasped by walking along what is considered sacred paths. Another factor contributing to their preservation is the remarkably consistent climate of the plateau where they are situated, devoid of wind, rain, or natural erosion. Strolling in this place feels akin to strolling on the moon, your footprints are destined to linger for an eternity. When visiting the Nazca Lines in person, guides will provide you with special shoes to protect the delicate ground from being disturbed. Several of these inscriptions are incredibly massive, crafted from a single unbroken line, with the largest stretching approximately 370 meters in length implying that these were not crafted by an idle individual with ample free time. Well, some pretty unexpected events have taken place before. The creation of these lines suggests a coordinated effort by a substantial number of individuals utilizing complex mathematical principles. One might wonder, what motivated their actions? What was the purpose behind crafting these mysterious symbols? And why were they designed on such a grand scale that their existence remained hidden until the era of aviation? Experts suggest that the Nazca lines may hold a deeper religious meaning. Aside from that ambiguous claim, it is impossible to determine due to the previously mentioned absence of written documentation. There is a theory suggesting that these were designed to catch the attention of celestial beings above. Some suggest that astronomy and constellations could have influenced the Mayans, which is a plausible theory given their existence. Some have suggested that they might have also functioned as a calendar for tracking agricultural activities. Various unconventional theories and interpretations exist about the Nazca lines, yet their visual appeal remains undeniable. Number 8. The Olmec Colossal Heads Central Mexico is home to a captivating location known as Tres Zapotes, in 1862, an intriguing discovery was made by a Mexican archaeologist who unearthed a large stone sculpture. Colossal stone heads. This monolith is over 30 centuries old and weighs more than 10 tons. The mysterious sculpture bore a human-like face, shrouded in anonymity. Surprisingly, this finding didn't receive significant recognition beyond Mexico. In 1938, an American archaeologist made a remarkable discovery when he found a stone head that was identical to another, causing a wave of excitement. Further excavations in the region revealed not only one, but a remarkable discovery of 17 large boulders intricately carved to depict human heads. These groundbreaking discoveries offered initial proof of the Olmec civilization, the most ancient culture in Mesoamerica. The stone heads come in a range of sizes, from around 4 to 11 feet tall, and boast impressive weights, ranging from 12,000 to nearly 100,000 pounds each. The discovery becomes even more intriguing when considering that the head sculptures are made of basalt, a rock usually associated with volcanoes, despite the nearest volcanoes being about 90 miles away. Delicate facial features were meticulously carved into the stone with the help of reeds and wet sand, resulting in a lifelike portrayal of the eyes, mouth, and nostrils. Additionally, there are intentional dimples created on the cheeks, chin, and lips. The heads each showcase distinct facial characteristics, portrayed in a remarkably lifelike and emotive style, resembling true portraits of rulers. Scholar Miller has pinpointed Colossal Head 5 as a ruler of San Lorenzo from the 2nd millennium BCE. Speculation has arisen regarding the sculpture's physiognomy, suggesting contact with African civilizations. However, the physical features found in the heads are still present in residents of modern Mexican cities like Tabasco and Veracruz. What was the purpose behind carving these heads? 
It is probable that they were created as a tribute to the Olmec leaders. It takes a great deal of resources and expertise to transport and carve the massive boulders into the sculptures we admire today, suggesting that only those in leadership positions could have accomplished such a feat. Aside from this informed speculation, there are few concrete specifics available about them. Determining their age can be quite challenging due to the fact that many of them were relocated from their original locations before being excavated in the 20th century. It is estimated that the majority of them were crafted between 1500 and 1000 BCE, with some dating back to the period between 1000 and 400 BCE. It's fascinating how these structures have stood the test of time, prompting us to ponder whether the enduring power of simple natural beauty surpasses that of grand human-made monuments such as the Colossus of Rhodes or the Lighthouse of Alexandria. Number 7. The Tomb of Genghis Khan Genghis Khan is renowned as one of the most formidable conquerors in history. He successfully united the nomadic tribes of Mongolia, transforming them into a formidable group of skilled warriors. He then embarked on a military expedition across the Eurasian continent, triumphantly conquering the vast lands of Central Asia, Northern China, and Northern Persia. His successors continued his conquests, expanding the empire to become the largest land empire in history by conquering territories in Russia, China, and the Middle East. The descendants of Genghis Khan went on to establish their own powerful empires, with notable figures such as Timur and Babur, founding the Timurid and Mughal empires, respectively. Immortality remains an elusive concept, with humanity eagerly anticipating advancements in science to potentially unlock this ultimate achievement. Genghis Khan passed away in August 1227. The circumstances surrounding his death remain a mystery, with possibilities ranging from illness, hunting injuries or falling in battle, to peacefully departing in his sleep. His remains were transported to Mongolia, where an impressive mausoleum was built to serve as his final resting place, now a revered site for Mongols worldwide, honoring the legacy of the great Khan. It could have been considered his final resting place, but in reality, the mausoleum is not where Genghis Khan is buried. It serves as a memorial rather than a tomb. Where was the final resting place of Genghis Khan? Simply put, we are not sure. Genghis Khan's final wish was for his body to be laid to rest in a quiet, unmarked grave. Following the orders of the great Khan, even in death, was the course of action taken. After his passing, his body was repatriated to Mongolia. It is believed that he was laid to rest in Kenti, his birthplace in the eastern region of the country, near the Onan River. Legend has it that 2,000 people attended his funeral, only to meet a tragic fate at the hands of his armies, who were in turn eliminated by his escort. The escort continued on a deadly path, taking out anyone in their way, before ultimately choosing to end their own lives. Regarding historical accuracy, it is uncertain if the account truly reflects what occurred. Nevertheless, the notion that Genghis Khan desired his body to be concealed posthumously presents a paradoxical conclusion for a figure known for his ruthless military campaigns. Similar to the mystery surrounding his final resting place, we are left to ponder his true intentions. Number 6. The Lost Civilization of Atlantis Atlantis, the legendary island that sank beneath the waves in the distant past, taking down with it an advanced civilization. Is it possible that we will ever find it? Or more importantly, did it even exist? Generations have been captivated by the tale of Atlantis, an advanced civilization that supposedly disappeared beneath the ocean. Plato, the Greek philosopher who first told us about Atlantis, depicted it as a kingdom on an island situated past the Pillars of Hercules, reportedly larger than Asia and Libya combined, boasting a developed civilization and rich in natural resources. Now the question that has been on everybody's mind is, where did it disappear to? There are various theories regarding the lost city's possible locations, spanning from the Mediterranean to the Caribbean, and from Scandinavia to Antarctica. It is believed by some historians that the Minoan civilization on the island of Crete was destroyed by a massive volcanic eruption around 1500 BC. Some believe that the story could be entirely allegorical, a cautionary tale created by Plato. Despite the civilization's prosperity and advancement, it is said to have sunk into the ocean in just one day and night of misfortune, without leaving any trace. The island was said to have been devastated by an unknown catastrophic event, sinking it into the ocean and erasing all signs of the once glorious civilization. 
Throughout the years, numerous explorations and archaeological studies have been conducted in an effort to uncover the secrets of the lost civilization. Various theories put forth by explorers, historians, and scientists suggest reasons for Atlantis's disappearance, ranging from cataclysmic natural disasters to extraterrestrial involvement. Despite numerous hypotheses and proposed evidence, the actual existence and alleged location of Atlantis continue to elude researchers, solidifying its status as one of the most intriguing unsolved mysteries of the ancient world. There is currently no significant archaeological evidence found to support the existence of a vast civilization like the lost city of Atlantis. As a result, Atlantis is more of a product of speculation, imagination, and storytelling rather than historical fact. Funny enough, another story goes thus. Legend says that the Atlantis city was built by Poseidon, the god of sea, of storms and earthquakes, when he fell in love with a mortal woman, Clato. He made this city on top of a hill, on an isolated island in the sea, to protect her, and named it Atlantis. According to the story, Poseidon walked through the world to find the biggest island until he reached the biggest of them all, Atlantis, and found it inhabited by people who were more beautiful and intelligent than the rest of the world. There he met and fell in love with a woman called Clato. It is said that all available evidence indicates that the philosopher Plato, sometime around 360 BC, invented the island nation in order to illustrate a point about the dangers of aggressive imperialism. In Plato's telling, Atlantis was no utopia. Rather, it was a foil for an idealized version of Athens from long before Plato's time. This ancient Athens was very similar to Plato's notion of the ideal state, says Jill Gensler, a professor of philosophy at Amherst College. Plato laid out the details for what such a state would look like in his famous work, The Republic. According to Gensler, it should be small and virtuous, and reject ostentation. The residents of Atlantis, on the other hand, were eventually filled with an unjust lust for possessions and power, according to Plato's character who described the island. Even after numerous explorers and researchers have dedicated their efforts to uncovering its secrets, the enigma of Atlantis remains as intriguing as ever, captivating our imagination and fueling discussions worldwide. Hey guys, before we move deeper into the video, it is time for our subscribers pick. In the photo right on your screen, you can see two grounded pyramids on each side of this Egyptian beauty, with one of them having an open doorway. And on top of these pyramids, you can also see some floating structures that look like prisms. With those floating prisms, this might go in line with the theory that the pyramids were built by aliens, or at least aliens showed humans how to build them. However, mainstream scholars and archaeologists had rejected the notion that aliens were involved in the construction of the pyramids. They argue that there is ample evidence to support the idea that the ancient Egyptians possessed the necessary knowledge, technology, and organizational skills to build these architectural marvels. With that said, we would love to know what you think, guys. Share your opinion in the comment section below. Now let's get back into the list, shall we? Number 5. The Yonaguni Monument. The Yonaguni Monument, or the Yonaguni Submarine Ruins, is an incredibly fascinating underwater rock formation shrouded in mystery. Off the coast of Yonaguni, Japan, lies a submerged enigma that has puzzled scientists and historians since its discovery in 1986. Beneath the waves, the Yonaguni Monument, a massive underwater rock formation, invites us to question everything we know about ancient civilizations. At first glance, the monument's sharp angles, flat surfaces, and precise alignments seem to defy natural explanation. Some believe this could be the remnants of a long-lost Pacific civilization, a Japanese Atlantis that sank into the ocean's depths thousands of years ago. But not everyone agrees. Skeptics argue that these formations are the work of natural geological processes sculpted over millennia by the movements of the Earth and the relentless force of the sea. Researcher Masaki Kimura from the University of the Ryukyus believes that the structure is a group of monoliths built by humans. According to Kimura, it dates back 10,000 years and was once part of the lost continent of Mu. Mu was a mythical continent in the Pacific, whose story parallels the myths of Atlantis and Lemuria. Supposedly, a great cataclysm, such as an earthquake or hurricane, submerged this land beneath the sea. Its survivors scattered across the earth, founding civilizations, including those of the ancient Egyptians and Maya. Academics often discredit this theory as conjecture or a straight-up fairy tale. The monument is a complex puzzle featuring a massive flat-topped pyramid, tight corridors, doors, and what some claim to be carved stairways and terraces, 
Some researchers believe that the site is the result of natural geological formation. These formations could be the work of years, let's say 20 million years of erosion and tectonic activities. Basically, the idea is that the Earth moves and it gives birth to new formations. If indeed man-made, its creation would require a level of technological sophistication not yet known to have existed in prehistoric Japan. Despite numerous dives and studies, the Yonaguni Monument keeps its secrets. Carbon dating of algae on the rock suggests the structure has been submerged for at least 10,000 years, predating the oldest known civilizations in the region. The debate rages on, with each dive bringing more questions than answers. Is the Yonaguni Monument a natural wonder shaped by the random forces of nature? Or is it a testament to a forgotten people capable of incredible architectural feats? Two main expeditions to the site took place in 1986 and 1997. Neither has come to a definitive conclusion. However, the evidence leads to several good assumptions. First, even though the structure looks like a pyramid or a building with steps, you cannot actually go up the steps. They're too big. Second, seeing rocks as possible animal statues could just be a matter of pareidolia. This is a common phenomenon in which the eye sees faces or shapes in everyday objects, like clouds. Finally, historians have often discredited the story of the lost continent of Mu as a shoddy mistranslation of texts with no other historical backing. Since the structure does not have any special protection from the Japanese government, divers can freely explore it and draw their own conclusions. Number 4. The Voynich Manuscript For over six centuries, a perplexing enigma has confounded experts across various fields. A 240-page ancient manuscript filled with a cryptic language, peculiar illustrations of mystical flora, unclothed figures, and celestial signs. The Voynich manuscript remains an enigmatic puzzle, resisting all attempts at classification or understanding. Back in 1912, the Collegia Romano Library in Central Europe, established by the Society of Jesus, encountered financial challenges. In order to resolve this, they made the decision to sell a portion of their books and materials to the Vatican Library. Landing in the possession of Wilfred Voynich, a mysterious book found its way into his hands. The mysterious book, with no title or author, spans around 240 pages and is a curious mix of nonsensical text, peculiar illustrations of plants, animals, and other strange content. Fascinated by its enigmatic essence, Voynich dedicated the following two decades to enticing scholars to delve into its mysteries. Speculating about the presence of a concealed code or mysterious message within the text intrigued him. Regrettably, Voynich passed away in 1930 without unraveling any answers. Following World War II, codebreakers from the Allied forces worked tirelessly to crack it. But progress was slow. Many scholars endeavored to decipher its code, leading to approximately 12 theories circulating in the academic community. None of the theories provided a definitive explanation for the content of the book. Number 3. The Mystery of the Great Pyramids of Egypt The Great Pyramid of Khufu, also known as Cheops, stands out among the remnants of the ancient world for its awe-inspiring presence. Despite our continuous exploration of the renowned Great Pyramids of Giza in Egypt, these structures never fail to maintain an aura of mystery. It stands tall above the Giza Plateau at its original height of around 481 feet. Built in 2560 BC, it held the title of the world's tallest man-made structure for more than 3,800 years. The specific techniques employed to construct these massive buildings are still unknown, leading to heated discussions among historians, archaeologists, and engineers. The method used by the Egyptians to cut, transport, and accurately position huge stone blocks, some weighing more than two tons, remains a long-standing mystery. Various theories have been proposed to explain how the pyramids were built, from the use of large labor forces and intricate systems of ramps and levers to more speculative ideas like alien intervention. With numerous theories available, the precise construction process still eludes us, showcasing the impressive engineering skills of the ancient Egyptians. The prevailing theory suggests that workers utilized wet sand as a lubricant to transport large stones from a nearby quarry on sleds across the desert. There is evidence indicating that ramps were possibly used to transport the stones, but the method of moving the heavy pieces to the highest sections, particularly at steep angles, remains unclear. 
Aside from their construction, the pyramids' purpose and symbolic meaning also spark a lot of speculation. These structures were constructed as magnificent burial sites for the pharaohs, with the purpose of guiding their spirits to the next realm. However, these structures could have also functioned as grand statements of the pharaoh's divine authority, showcasing their influence and importance to the public. Egyptian pharaohs constructed the pyramids as elaborate tombs, believing they would ascend to godhood in the afterlife and equipped them with all necessities for the next world. Pharaoh Khufu initiated the construction of the first pyramid in 2550 BC. Pharaoh Khafre's son constructed the second pyramid, slightly smaller than the first, around 2520 BC, along with the mysterious limestone sphinx believed to protect the tomb. Pharaoh Menkar constructed the third temple in 2490 BC. It is smaller than the first two structures, yet boasts a more detailed interior temple. The astronomical alignments of the pyramid contribute to its mysterious aura. For instance, the three Giza pyramids are aligned with the three stars in Orion's belt, which is linked to the Egyptian god Osiris, the god of death and the afterlife. The accuracy of these alignments, similar to the pyramid's construction, suggests a level of expertise and understanding that surpasses typical expectations for a civilization of that time. Interestingly, the pyramids are more than just silent tombs. They actually house a complex network of chambers and corridors. The Great Pyramid of Khufu contains three chambers, one of which is the king's chamber that holds an empty sarcophagus. Recent studies utilizing muon tomography, a method that identifies muons generated by cosmic rays interacting with the Earth's atmosphere, indicate the potential existence of concealed chambers inside the pyramid, sparking additional curiosity. Number 2. The Sword of St. Galgano Upon hearing the sword in the stone, our thoughts are immediately transported to the iconic King Arthur and his destined authority. Hidden among the picturesque landscapes of Tuscany, Italy, is a captivating mystery that mirrors ancient legends, the Sword of St. Galgano. In the 12th century, a noble knight named Galgano Guidotti endeavored to abandon his life of violence. Inspired by a divine vision from Archangel Michael, Galgano wanted to embed a cross into the earth as a powerful symbol of peace. With no wood in sight, he plunged his sword into a rock, envisioning it as a makeshift cross. Remarkably, the blade effortlessly penetrated the stone, where it has remained ever since. The Sword of Saint Galgano has undergone a thorough scientific examination. Through metal dating and analysis, the authenticity of the item has been confirmed to date back to the 12th century, coinciding with Galgano's lifetime. These studies provide substantial evidence supporting the historical accounts of Galgano's life and his extraordinary deeds. The distinction between legend and historical fact becomes increasingly hazy. Doubters challenge the authenticity of the story, proposing that the sword might have been inserted into an already existing crevice, or that the narrative was a later inclusion in Christian folklore. The legend's authenticity continues to be a subject of debate, with every new discovery only serving to deepen the mystery rather than provide definitive answers. Number 1. Bermuda Triangle An enigmatic location steeped in history, myth, and urban legend, the Bermuda Triangle remains a perplexing and perilous area within the western North Atlantic Ocean. Countless ships, aircraft, and individuals have vanished without a trace, adding to its mystique. Vanishing mysteriously without leaving a single clue could potentially occur in any location globally. However, the Bermuda Triangle has gained legendary status due to its connection with such occurrences. Some believe that tropical storms may be linked to the disappearances, while others speculate that magnetic interference in the region could be affecting compasses. While there are many theories about supernatural causes for these disappearances, it is more probable that geophysical and environmental factors play a significant role. It is speculated that pilots may have overlooked the agonic line, a critical point where magnetic compass variation is not a factor, as they neared the Bermuda Triangle. This oversight potentially led to a major navigational miscalculation and subsequent disaster. One intriguing theory suggests that the disappeared vessels may have been taken down by enormous rogue waves, which can tower up to 30.5 meters and possess the force to obliterate any trace of a ship or aircraft. Situated in the Atlantic Ocean, the Bermuda Triangle is a mysterious region where converging storms can lead to the formation of rogue waves. Perhaps human error could be the cause of all the disappearances that have taken place there. Doubters often highlight the lack of substantial evidence indicating that the Bermuda Triangle poses any more danger than other areas of the ocean. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.